Hey everyone, it's Holly, and today I'm going to be giving you my top 10 tips on how to succeed on your IAs. So if you're in the IB Diploma program, you know the struggle of completing all of your IAs in subjects like math and science and history. You have to complete 6 to 12 page documents where you analyze and evaluate different experiments or explorations that you've decided to do. So it's a big project and it's very wide and open-ended, so I'm going to give you my best tips on how to succeed. My first tip is to pick a unique topic, because examiners don't like to read the same thing over and over again. And of course, for students, all of the topics seem new because it's your first time completing an IA. So just do a little bit of research online to find out which topics are really popular and common and then avoid those topics. And then you can pick a really unique topic that you're interested in that will make your experience as positive as possible. My second tip is not to force personal engagement. Because if you've read over all the criteria, you'll know that personal engagement is a really big one. So they want to see that you're interested in the topic, that you've tried really hard and all of these different things. But don't try to force it. Don't write, I really like this. I love hydrochloric acid. No one's going to believe that you just love hydrochloric acid, so you wanted to write your IA on it. So write about things that come naturally. There should be personal engagement that stems naturally from your IA, about how much effort you put into it and different pre-experiments that you did in order to determine what was the best way to analyze it. So all of these things are a way to make personal engagement come more naturally. Just don't force it because examiners will really be able to tell when you've just been writing a bunch of crap. My third piece of advice is don't make anything up. Integrity is a really important part of the IB program and of life. Don't make things up. Don't be stupid. Making things up is just a complete wrong thing to do. It goes against all moral codes. Don't make up data. Scientists don't make up data. Don't make up facts in history. That's just wrong. You need to reference the sources you use and you need to use real data that you collected. Of course there'll be error, but you can talk about that. In a bunch of my IAs, my experimental data was not significant. But I could still draw some conclusions based off it and I could still talk about things that I could do in the future and some of the error that influenced why I got those results. So that's what's really important. It's not that you get the perfect results because that's just stupid and not un it's not attainable. It's not real. It, results aren't perfect in science. Results aren't perfect in math. Results aren't perfect in anything. My fourth tip is that format matters. So all of those things that make up format and structure, such as table numbers and figure numbers and referencing them in your analysis, as well as making your diagrams big enough to read and doing proper references and citations, making the font big enough to read and the spacing big enough. Don't put your margins way at the edge just to make it fit. Cut out some stuff and make the margins reasonably sized. All of these things are really important for the structure and look of your IA because presentation matters. It's a professional thing. You want your IA to look like a real experiment or a real historical document that you're making judgments and all of these things. It's important to have a clear and concise and professional format. Tip number five is to label your diagrams. So if you include a picture, make sure the picture is one, really, really significant, two, that it's important for the examiner to see. For example, the setup of your science experiment. So in chemistry or biology or physics, the setup could be really important because not everyone has done that experiment before. So make sure you take a picture of your setup while you're doing your experiment and then label it. So, you know, make it, um, a drawing on Google Docs or things like that and then you can put in lines and um, text to show what everything is because just having a picture with no figure number with no labels it's kind of just like why is that there why is that significant why did that person just throw in a random photo so make sure that you label all of your photos and make sure that each photo you put in is really significant tip number six is to double check or triple check your math so make sure that all of your math is correct because that's kind of a stupid thing to lose marks on go through all of your experimental results the error that you propagated how many significant figures you have in your math make sure that when you're deriving formulas that it's correct all of these things make sure that your graphs are displaying that actual data that you have, that you didn't make errors when you were transferring it from your document to a spreadsheet, all of these things, just make sure you double or triple check all of it. My seventh piece of advice is quality over quantity. So of course, this is a pretty common cliche, but it really makes sense in the context of your IAs. So it's better to have a seven or eight page IA that's really quality and really, really good and you make lots of good evaluations versus having a 12 page one where you're just repetitive, you're talking about basic math, all of these things. You don't want to have something that just rambles on and repetitive because repetitiveness is one of those things that examiners and just people in general don't like reading things that repeat themselves. So just really avoid being repetitive and have lots of quality versus 
quantity. Tip number eight is to use references and to give societal relevance. Why is your topic important to society? Why does it matter that you completed this experiment? Like don't just throw out a bunch of numbers and derive some formulas and just finish there. You want to show that your topic is important. Your topic is significant to society. It matters. Maybe it's going to help make a difference to the environment or it's going to help keep people safe when they're eating foods. All of these factors you want to consider when writing your IA. You want to talk about other studies that have been done and studies that could be done in the future to further the research that you started. Tip number nine is to weave your knowledge into your analysis. Don't just spurt off a bunch of information. You're not a textbook. Just write things that really matter, weave it into your analysis, to your introduction, all of these things and just when it's really relevant and when it really matters, talk about it because you want to show that you know the content from the course but you don't want to just be a textbook. And finally, tip number 10 is to explain everything clearly. Assume that the person that's reading your IA didn't do the IA. They don't know everything about your topic. They don't know all the little intricacies that aren't part of the curriculum. Make sure you explain all these things and explain why you're doing things. Not just why it matters to society, like I said before, but also why did you decide to do this versus this? There's probably lots of different options for things you could have done, for routes you could have taken. If you're doing a certain amount of a chemical, why did you choose that amount? Why does that matter? So talk about all these things and then you'll weave in things like stoichiometry or ex exponents or all of these different things. You can just kind of put them into your analysis when it's relevant and when it really matters. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that these tips might help you with your IAs. If you have any further questions about how to succeed on your IAs, leave those in the comments below and I can give a bit of my advice. Okay, so I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!